Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another exciting episode of Random Vlogging! So, uh, today, I am going to preface this with, this is a major, major, major spoiler alert. I am going to talk about the new Daredevil TV series on Netflix. I'm going to talk about everything all the way up to the last episode. Major spoilers. If you have not seen it yet, turn the video off. Go watch it, because it's pretty amazing. Uh, and uh, come back later, because this is going to spoil everything. Um, so, saying that, uh, Daredevil. Daredevil is, uh, there are parts of this show that I love, and there are parts that I despise. Um, I guess, first things first, I'm, I'm going to talk about probably the best part of the entire uh, television series are the action scenes. Uh, for those of you that are not familiar with Daredevil in general, um, the comic book character appeared back in, I think, the 60s or 70s as a Marvel comic book character. Uh, he's done quite a few crossovers uh, into... Uh, he uh, he works in New York City. Um, so uh, he's done quite a few crossovers with uh, Spider-Man, seen as they're both, you know, uh, Daredevil's in um, uh, Hell's Kitchen, which is a part of New York City. And then uh, Spider-Man is just New York City in general. Um, so, yeah, those two have... have, have uh, uh, shown up at, uh, in each other's comics on a fairly regular basis. I love Daredevil. I think he's amazing. Um, but uh, one of the unique things about him is when he was a kid, uh, he uh, there was an accident involving some radioactive waste that got into his eyes and blinded him. But because of that, he all of his other senses are heightened to superhuman uh, abilities to the point where, yes, technically he can't see, but due to a combination of heightened sense of touch uh, and heightened spatial awareness, uh, along with a heightened sense of hearing, he can see just about as well, technically better, than any uh, human, because it doesn't actually have to look at something to see it. He can echolocate. So because of that, and the uh, the spatial awareness and everything, and, and, and heightened, uh, I can't remember what it's called, but like, if I do this uh, off camera, like, I don't have to look at my arm to know exactly where it is. Like, right now, it's about level with my head. Um, there's a term for that feeling. His is heightened. So he's super, super acrobatic, and that translates into a fighting style. So how does this relate to the show? Okay, the fighting that Daredevil does is hands down uh, probably the best part of this show. Um, and his fighting style is very, very reminiscent of the actual Daredevil stuff. Like Daredevil mixed in a little bit of everything. Um, capoeira, he did uh, some taekwondo, if I remember correctly. He does some jujitsu, aikido. Like, he mixes a little bit of everything to create this very, very acrobatic fighting style. Because, again, technically, he doesn't need to be able to see his opponent, so he can do these, these massive jumps and twists and things like that and still uh, remain completely fighting capable. Unlike a traditional seeing uh martial artist where it doesn't matter what they're doing they have to make sure that they're looking at their opponent or else they lose track of them so uh the fighting in in the uh show there's lots of jumps and flips and and it's very very acrobatic for what he does um and uh the plot itself to be perfectly honest the plot itself trods along uh really slowly in my personal opinion like i i understand uh that they wanted to do kind of an origin story type thing but these are 13, almost completely hour-long episodes. Like, they clock in at, like, 55 to 58 minutes apiece. So they're not like traditional television, where an hour-long show is actually only about 43 minutes or 42 minutes. The rest of that 18 minutes is taken up by commercials. Um, these are almost entirely hour-long productions. And so a 13-hour origin story, to me, was overdoing it a little bit. Um... I mean, translate that into comic books, that's probably, you know, if you're going with an every other week comic release with the amount of just stuff that they talked about, it just, it would have taken forever to just get through his origin story. And in general, origin stories should be kind of shortened to the point because all they do is they tell you where the character comes. You'll find uh, a lot of times in comic books, they will put, uh, uh, they'll put you uh, kind of, um, I think the term is in media res. 
Um, basically, they put you in the middle of the action and they explain things later. And a lot of times that's what happens is they'll, they'll introduce the character in one of his big adventures and then, you know, later they will show his origin story. And it's normally like a book or two of origin. This is like an entire comic series run of origin story. And that's all it is. And so, yeah, the plot just trods along and plops along the entire time very, very slow. And I'm not saying the show itself is slow. Um, the show is actually fairly action-packed, and it um, it has a pretty decent plot. But for someone going into it wanting to see kind of the daredevil man without fear that I've seen from the comic books, because, again, he's been around for over 30 years, uh, you know, I'm, I'm expecting to see, you know, the man without fear and, and stuff like that. And it just it wasn't happening. You were learning about him and Fisk, which I'll get to in a little bit and uh, Foggy, and, and just just every single character they possibly could. Um, the other thing I was less than thrilled about, and I think this was more, I guess, a cinematic direct uh, direction they decided to take that I wasn't particularly thrilled with, it doesn't technically conflict with uh, the comics at all. I just, again, for 13 hours, Matt, uh, Matt Burnock, Daredevil, Matt gets his ass kicked a lot. Like, over and over and over and over again. Uh, just completely, completely failing. And he's, he's constantly covered in bruises. And again, I understand that you're trying to make it more realistic. And if you actually were going out and doing crime fighting, uh, uh, you would be covered with bruises and, and, and things like that. But it just, I don't know. It seemed like he was getting his ass kicked far too often. Uh, and a lot of times he just barely would make it out of situations on top uh just over and over and over again and i wasn't particularly fond of that if i'm gonna watch a superhero flick like um i i want to see the superhero doing badass stuff and having you know only super villains be able to uh take him down like he was literally getting taken there there aren't any other super powered people in uh this particular run uh, and so uh, the fact that Matt Murdock can barely hold his own against competent fighters uh, means that in a world, and they, they reference uh, the Avengers and they reference, you know, all the stuff that happened in uh, the first Avengers movies and all that. Like, they make tons of references to that in this show. And um, there would be no possible way that Daredevil could hold his own, even against Captain America, um, and Captain America is technically not superhuman; he's peak human. Um, so yeah, I just I didn't. It, Daredevil seemed super, super, I guess, depowered in this. And again, because of the origin story, maybe they're planning if they get a second season to make him more powerful as they go. But it just seemed too, I guess, too much of a weakling uh, compared to the to to how phenomenally powered he is in uh, the comic books. Uh, the other thing I didn't like was his motivation. Um, Again, I, I don't think this technically derivates incredibly far from the comic book, but one of the things that was kind of defining factor of Daredevil for a long time was this idea of kind of justice and, uh, you know, uh, the uh, not really the ends justify the means, but he's one of those uh, superiors in general. They go outside of law. And with his background as a lawyer, he has a very unique look on it because he actually knows what the law is and what the law isn't and what you know, he knows exactly how illegal all the things that he's doing are. And so you go through this entire thing where um, at least the feel that I always got of Daredevil is he was kind of an angel of justice type person. When the justice system failed, he didn't. That kind of thing. And he was much more an anti-hero type character. Uh, in this, he's Batman. He literally is. Like, they get really close to using a couple of the, you know, lines, I'm the, you know, I'm the, the hero this city needs, and this city needs me. I was so, I was just waiting for him to just pull, you know, interrogation and go, swear to me. So, I, I didn't like the fact that he turned him into Batman. I, I just, I, I didn't think that, to me, isn't Daredevil. Um, so, yeah, like I said, it, it wasn't bad. Like I said, I enjoy Batman. Like, it wasn't that I didn't enjoy the series. I enjoy Batman. 
Um, I just was expecting something very, very different, and I personally don't agree with the choices that they made. I still think everybody needs to see this. If for nothing else, then the fact that if tons of people watch this, uh, Netflix is going to make more stuff like this, and I think that's phenomenal. Uh, the one thing that I actually, like, all this other stuff was, like, little nitpicky, like, eh, I didn't like that decision. This I actually hated. Wilson Fisk. Wilson Fisk is the kingpin. Uh, for those of you who don't know, he is a criminal mastermind. He is a, kind of the equivalent of Lex Luthor to Marvel. Uh, and one of the most enduring, uh, enduring aspects of this character is the fact that he doesn't have to actually get his hands dirty almost ever. In the comic books, he's a very much a behind-the-scenes kind of person. He does get his hands dirty. Um, and uh, that's one of the things that uh, a lot of people um, find most interesting about the character is there will be times, and, and this has happened to, I know, Spider-Man when he dealt with him at first, and I think the same thing happened when Daredevil dealt with him at first, um, is they'll get to the point where like, yeah, I'm going to take this guy down, and he's been doing all this manipulation behind the scenes, and so people, uh, they just assume that, yeah, he's just going to fold or he's going to try and trick his way out, and the kingpin is deadly. Like, he, uh, in the comic books, he's a really big guy, but he's solid muscle. Um, and so uh, when he does have to tangle, like, he gives Spider-Man a run for his money, he gives Daredevil a run for his money. Um, but that's the thing that's so surprising about him, is he looks just like this kingpin, He's he looks overweight, he looks just like a pushover, and then the surprise and the twist is the fact that he can take these guys down without too much difficulty. In the show, the kingpin is a whiny little baby that kills everybody. Like, he has no control over his emotions. You get these flashbacks to what turned him into what he is, where his, his dad apparently used to beat his mom and used to... His dad was a sadistic, horrible, just horrible person. Um, but throughout the rest of it, Wilson is just this little crying baby. Anytime something goes wrong, he, he sits there and he gets angry. He kills... Uh, oh, man. He kills like three or four people with his bare hands. One of them he actually decapitates by slamming his head in his car door enough times to actually chop this guy's head off. And he does this personally because this guy did, if I remember correctly for that one, it was he, he, he almost got this girl that he's interested in hurt. And that's the other thing that annoyed the hell out of me. And this, I'm not as familiar with the King Bing comic book aspect of it. Um, but his major motivation in this show is the fact that he's trying to change New York and make it better, make Hell's Kitchen better. And, uh, he falls for this art dealer, uh, girl, and, like, it, he, he turns into this soppy little, uh, just incredibly, uh, has uh, massive issues of self-esteem and like he, he sits there and he tries to ask her out and he's always like, Oh, well, well, I thought you didn't like me and I thought you weren't going to like me and I don't want you to find out who I really am because then you won't like me and I really like you. And just, they add this subplot of him, you know, trying to fall for this and, uh, you know, this woman and it turns him into a complete douche, like an absolutely massive douche, the entire thing. And he, he's involved in everything, and, it, and it, it actually goes to show, like, again, in the comic books, he's a criminal genius. In this, they start off with a group of about, like, five bad guys, you know, five crime lords, and one by one, they get killed off. And most of the time, they get killed off by accident, or they get killed off by Daredevil, without, and, and, and Fisk just kind of adapts to it. And that's not who he is. He's a criminal mastermind. He's insanely calculating. Everything he does, he has a... And the only time you see that at all is in the very, very end. After Daredevil uh, kicks the snot out of him, gets him arrested, the very like last five minutes of the show, you see that he's actually laid plans. So as soon as he gets in uh, this uh, truck and they're, they're taking him off... Uh, one of the SWAT officers that arrested him uh, shoots the other one, and they get him out. 
And that's the only time he's shown to be calculating at all. The rest of it, he's just this whiny little baby that anytime somebody, you know, threatens his girl or, you know, does something that makes him feel stupid, he goes into a little rage and kills them, personally. Like, he's just horrendous, horrible, horrible villain. Um, so, yeah, that's the only aspect of the show I really didn't like. The other thing I was less than thrilled about, um, you don't get to see the Daredevil costume until literally like 20 minutes from the end of the last episode. Um, and, and when I first saw the costume, I was I didn't like it. And after watching him fight and everything in it, uh, it's a very realistic costume. It makes sense. And it grows on you. I actually think it's a pretty cool costume. I would have liked to see more of it. Um, but again, this 13-hour origin story... Uh, they wanted to make sure that they really laid the foundation of this is why everything happens and, and this is who he is. So, yeah. Like I said, if you haven't seen it yet, check it out. Uh, I've, I've ruined all the greatest bits for you. Um, but, yeah, I, uh, it's it's a phenomenal show in on its own. Uh, had it not been Daredevil, had it been somebody else, uh, I would have had no qualms except for Fisk. Because, again, he's just a douche. Um, my only qualms with it are knowing the comic book character, this is a very different version of him. And I think a lot of the things that made Daredevil as cool as he is have been taken out of this rendition of him. Um, and it, it seems like they're, they're, they're kind of relying on tropes. I hope with the other three, because uh, we still have Iron Fist, Luke Cage, and Jessica Jones are the other three... Uh, Marvel Netflix TV series. I hope with the other three they don't rely on tropes as much, um, but we'll see. Um, so anyway, this has gone really, really long. I'm sorry, but I had a lot of opinions on this. Uh, that's going to be all for me today, and uh, I actually have two episodes of D&D Recap, so I'm caught up uh, with last week and the week before that I haven't released them. I have them filmed. I just have to put the audio on it, and those should be coming up probably tomorrow uh, or the next day. Um, I'm, I'm going to stagger them a little bit, and then we'll be completely caught up on D&D Recap. So I will see you tomorrow, definitely, for some D&D Recap. All right? Bye-bye!